Yeah, so this is good. But I want to show is the, the, the overall position that this boat here is he's quite far behind, but he's gonna hit the pressure lane which was here, situated on the water. So you can maybe start the play. The So you're still doing like six, six and a half. You see like the speed is going up. Now he's hitting that pressure from the pressure lane. And so he keeps taking it. The pressure he goes all the way to nine. You see this boat still doesn't have it. You yeah, see that? No. It's kept doing six. It was that pressure was right here. And he was jived away of it. They even overstood. But that, since the pressure lane was here, they still have it now. See, they're still faster than they are because they're in that pressure. Here was almost at the edge of that pressure patch, and then soon they will sell out of it again. <laughs> but if you look to that, where we were in the first situation, these boat is quite far behind. And and they were quite far behind these boats, and at the finish they were right there. They saw this pressure line, but they also saw that it was only situated in this position of the, at this part of the course. So therefore they, they actually overstood their lay line. If that was, they were, how to say, they sell in, oh, they sell in more pressure here, so this part they can do fast. And they invest in, if they sell out of pressure here, they can still heat up and maintain that speed. And they found a little bit of extra wind on the course. Their speed went up, they kept going, but also saw that that pressure lane wasn't reaching all the way to the finish. So they kept sailing beyond that lane, still sailed deep and fast in that, or still their normal angle when there was still pressure, when there was still pressure here. Then they sailed out of it and they could heat up a little bit more to maintain that same speed. The boat, the boat up here was doing like most of the time 4.7, 4.5 for the people who couldn't see, you have to believe me, it was true. But the boats down here, if they had a little bit more space, we can do sail their own angle or sail a faster angle. Carrie, you tell. From the pink boat? Over here. So this this part of the race was really tricky for us because we were clearly in less pressure than the boats to windward of us. We wanted to be on the right, but we started to lure to the group. Um, and at this point we start to get in really light pressure. And no matter what, we know that we want to get to the right, but um, in a race course we think of it as thirds and we try to split the race course up into the first quarter, the, the middle half, and the third quarter. And uh, we, we split it into quarters, and we try to say, um, we know we want to get to the right, but we, at this point we tacked a little bit early in the race course where there's so many people who can cause a problem for us. We're so vulnerable. We used to call it like you're, you're the one who's taking the, uh, the hit. You know, you're the, you're the kind of the weasel that can get messed with. So we tacked really early, and there's so many people who can, who can take that spot from us. So we, we're in a very vulnerable position, and we get we get faced by everyone coming from the right. You see, like a lot of boats tech here, which limit our space. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about your risk analysis of when we know we need to tack to the right, but by t being the first boat to tack in that situation, we set ourselves up that other people are going to want to do that to us. So we, we knew we needed to get to the right. That was already a mistake, but we need to look and play the, the, the chess game of who will tack on us, when is the best opportunity to tack, and we tacked a bit too early, we sort of played the sacrificial lamb a bit. But in this scenario then, uh, we're looking at the sterns of two boats in this picture, and instead of getting really frustrated and should we just tack straight away, the, we actually said, okay, up the course, is it top left or is it top right, where's the next big pressure coming from? So we're the first boat to tack away, not necessarily because we're behind their sterns, but mostly because we say, whoa, the boat's like peasy up on the top left. 
all the pressure is going to start feeding in from this left side. So we take that time knowing that we don't think they're going to attack on us so that we can have now clear air and going towards that next pressure. And I think the last point that was so, so important was that the fog was there. We knew that the race was only 0.8 mi uh, miles. And you can't see the mark, but you know how long you've been sailing. You know that it's not going to be another town away. You're, you're getting in within the next couple minutes that you're going to be on ley line. So without being able to see the mark, but knowing roughly how far we've sailed, we tacked back to port to get to find where that ley line was when the fog would clear or when we could see the mark. And a lot of people went way further left. And that course and was so short. And here, like these boats have more pressure. Their speed's going up more than we. Now we're getting, compared to these boats, now we're getting those Eight versus pressures. Eight five. Well. So it was, it, you know, it's kind of, is it luck or is it being smart that you know that the course is only 0.8 of a mile, so you, you should get back on the port heading back towards the right because you don't necessarily know where the mark is. So we sort of took a, a middle road game there, a conservative approach. But the most important was at this moment then to say, is it so important for us to stick here and get to the right because that's where the next pressure is? Or is it the left? And that, that is our answer. Sometimes you have to sit behind those people because the right's going to be so strong. So you have to think of those sort of throw the dice up in the air. Some people throw the dice and they just tap. Or you make an educated decision based on looking around. We have plenty of time for the light air. So. Yeah, and the thing is, we, we didn't mind going to the left at that stage. And why? You try to look for tails, and it was hard to look on the water. Well, we, what we thought to see is that the actual uh, fork on the left was going away, mm -hmm. was, was like peeling off there, going away. They had a nice it was more clearing on the left, so therefore we thought more clearing on the left will probably mean that there is more breeze on the left pushing that air away. And let's go there for more pressure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also when we sailed out to the racetrack, where he felt like on shore there was a we had like good breeze and we could f easily fly the hull off. There was good pressure on our close to the shoreline. And that's probably why you guys went all the way to the right. So he out of his story he went to the right. The well, important thing was for him he he went to the right. He had good pressure and what was a, a moment of decision for him to take was when he he got knocked and he got a bit of a header. He was like I'm still in good pressure. The pressure is going right, so it's a good moment to take back again. And when you're, when you're sailing, you try to wait for those moments, and those moments are either you get more pressure and you see a good lane, a good lane of pressure to take in, or you see a header to take in, so you start selling the next lift. Those are moments you try to wait for to make a decision. And they kept sailing and keeping their eyes all the time out of the boat. They kept looking like, hey, the left seems to feel good, good pressure now. We're still in a good position here, so. We're heading for what we see is the next pressure patch. And I don't know if there are any people who are on the right of them tacked out to the right, maybe remember. I don't know if there are any people like that here. Might be interesting to hear why they thought they needed to go one more time to the right. Nobody here wants to admit that they're going to <laughs> In general, with determining where to go, it's trying to find the tails and trying to find the lanes. And what Kerry said earlier is like we'd be tacked in a position where yeah we were not leading yet, but sometimes you wanna you wanna work your way to the other side. And if everybody takes it, you need to be able to say, okay, we need to make one more clearing tack or we really need to stay here. And that's sort of the decision you need to make. Can we stay here? Does it hurt us that much or or do we really need to tack out and, and clear ourselves? <laughs>